Okay, here's the plan. You remember we painted the bulkheads a light gray so that when this piece here was set in place, we'd be able to, uh, you know, see them through through the windows or through through the openings. And uh, we never actually checked to see what what we could see. Um, Okay, I think we can get that to glue down okay when the time comes. So the idea is, let me move this out of the way carefully. Now, if I use uh, this jig here, we should be able to uh, adjust our lighting so that we can see the back wall. Now, what what is above it and what is below it is going to be way overexposed. It's going to be complete, completely washed out. But we should be able to see what we would see if we were to look through there and maybe use a flashlight or something. Um, I'm beginning to realize now that I probably do not need to paint the the uh, the ceiling on this thing if, you, if they call it a ceiling on a ship and it's probably called something else because everything else is called something else instead of what it is anyway uh, let me just sort of readjust here a little bit and then the idea will be that we'll be able to you know move move the camera along and hopefully we're going to be able to, like, looking in the windows. We'll see how it goes here. This this may not work. I actually have not tried it yet. So uh, what you see right now is pretty much the first time. So, in fact, it is the first time. Now, once again, I just wanted to remind you, I know that when you first look at this scene, you think, oh, my goodness, it's terribly overexposed. What happened? But just completely ignore everything except that little slit that we're looking through. And we're just trying to see the back wall, which is, I know is only maybe 10% of the scene. But that's what's important here. I maybe could have had it a little bit darker, but not very much. Well... Our looking inside did not turn out as I'd hoped, but we did get to see the back. Anyway, I was noticing here, especially on this side, that this piece here is sort of pushed in. And well, let's, let's put it this way, it's more or less straight, and it shouldn't. It should sort of bow out a little bit to match the gunnel of the, of the hull. So, you know, if in order to pull it out so it matches, it has to be pulled quite hard. And uh, I'm just wondering if maybe I should maybe try and heat this up really good and, and bend it out a little bit. Let's just let's just flip this upside down and see what it looks like. I, I did look over on the other side, and the other one, when you push it down, it does match a lot better uh, to the gunnel than this one does. We'll just flip this over. Okay, this is the one here that was on the other side that I said was kind of bowed out a little bit. You can actually see it's just slightly bowed out, and it follows the gunnel really nice. Now, this is the one in question that's a bit of a problem. Now, you can see it kind of goes in instead of out. So I was just wondering if I was to take my heat gun and warm this whole section up nice and hot, and... Uh, could I bend it out and would it stay that way after it cools? I don't know. Uh, I don't want to be pulling too hard on it and break something. Okay, <clears throat> when we put this on, 
as well as having to pull this back this way there, there it seems to take uh, a fair amount of force to hold this on and if I was to you know get this in position and then and then glue it like that the way it's supposed to be so let me readjust here a bit okay we can see better now okay so not only do I have to pull it out like this but I have to put quite a bit of force um, hold, to hold it down so what I'm thinking is probably going to happen is that even though I was to get it in place and glue it in place it, over time it, it could slowly pull loose from from being glued to the top of the gunnel because it, you notice how it, it matches right here okay that that's good that's perfect and and out here it's good but it's from here to here that it's bad now this is my thinking you can't see what is behind right there you can't see it in other words if I was to take and just let me take this back off again okay now <clears throat> let's say I was to trim this thing down and I was to glue it along the edge like this so that it would I would be sort of taking that part and slipping it over this um, this piece here would not only hold it out the right amount but it would give more support to, to, to glue it down so that it doesn't want to pop back up over time um, that's, that's my thinking right now and you know I've I've got another piece here and um, I think I'm going to just sort of uh, entertain that idea a little bit here uh, trim this down and uh, yeah we've got enough here that we can it, you know an area like this would be more than enough to hold this thing down um, it would mean that out at the ends uh, I wouldn't need to put any glue because it's already being held down by the center because the thing is kind of bowed up and I need it to be bowed this way uh, <laughs> sorry if I'm not making a whole lot of sense there My thinking is that I don't want any little protrusions that's going to be holding the plastic uh, away from the part. In other words, I want as much of the of the plastic to. Uh, oh, by the way, I would I would use, I'm going to use the uh, Tamiya extra thin, so the plastic will sort of weld together here. In other words, the, the larger the area of weld, the stronger it's going to be. Now. I'll reposition again and uh, I think this is going to work out right. It need, needs a little bit more filing in some places.
Okay, it's it's not taking very much uh, force to make this thing follow the contour of the outside of the gunnel. Very very little actually. Um, what would be nice is if the gunnel was a little bit more proud of the deck. And that way I could just, you know, bring this up against the gunnel and then it'd be perfect. But I think we can I think we can get it here. Um, I imagine that what I'm going to want to do is, being as that the deck tan is going to want to separate the plastic, I'm going to want to be sure and you have enough extra thin flowing in. I'm going to I'll probably glue it from the back, and I want enough extra thin flowing in that it's going to dissolve the the deck tan and get right into the plastic and. Uh, the whole idea is to have this mounted nice and securely on the on the deck. I, th I think this is going to work out okay. Okay, what I did was I I heated it up and I to about 220 degrees. Um, this that's what the heat gun said, and then I put a little bit of a bend on it. Uh, but maybe I put too much of a bend on it, but. Let's see what happens if I bring this right up against the edge of the gunnel there. It doesn't seem to be too difficult to get it to where it'll match up. Now, no use uh, saturating the deck any more than I have to here. Now, this this mark that I'm that I'm making uh, that that won't be seen because it's going to be, you know, in behind that that wall, or not wall, but sort of a, a solid a solid uh, 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 railing. Okay. Just leave that there and get it ready. Um, I might have to reposition just a little bit here and get the camera out of my way. We're gonna have to have a change in plans here. That hole is for a davit. A davit goes here and a davit goes there. It goes just on the inside of the of the uh, solid railing, and uh, kind of comes over, hangs over the edge of the ship from the inside. If this is there, then I can't put this one on. So maybe what I have to do is uh, split this, and then have this section just a little bit out here. Um, now there is another thing. How much of this is going to be seen when you're looking down at the way I'm pointing right now. Um, maybe I should put that piece back on here. Yeah, I'm just going to put this back on here and, and, and see what we got. I'm just realizing here that this may not be a good idea. Because when you're looking down like this, like I'd forgotten that this goes in here like this. Maybe what we're going to have to do is have it broken up so that there's a, a piece right here and then another piece right here. Would that be enough? Could we... If it was held out... There's something I could hook in there without marking this. Yeah, it could be that if, if it was held there and held here, that, that might be enough and it doesn't have to go the full length and that way it would actually, it could if somebody did see it it, it would look like maybe it was one of those uh, storage boxes or something I had originally thought of maybe painting this deck tent so it wouldn't really show up but it, it, will, it will show up a little bit so um, yeah I think that if we can have one right there like that about, uh, oh, maybe oh, three quarters of an inch long. And the same thing right here. Now to have it uh, centered where this, where this piece protrudes out the most, it's going to cover up this, this uh, davit. So it, it can't come, it has to be about an eighth of an inch this side of the davit and uh, then run maybe three quarters of an inch. This one here, it can be right opposite this this thing here, which would represent 
a support for the gun that's supposed to go up here. I wonder why there's no support for this gun. Probably it's a lot more late duty. Well, here we go. Oh my, it's sure dissolving that paint, isn't it? Oh, you can see the uh, the paint and plastic oozing its way out, so that that's a good sign, I guess. Maybe I could get it to wick its way in. Come from the back a little bit here. And I do believe I've left enough room for that davit. You can I can feel it sort of welding itself into place there. It wants to slowly slide. I do believe this is going to work. I think this will be quite strong once that uh, liquefied plastic uh, resets. Okay, now this side here, maybe I won't... Uh, let's see here. Maybe what I should do is I don't know what I should do. Just put a little bit on so it's going to hold itself in place here. And I'll put this down. Get it in place here. Let it wick its way in from the back. I don't know, I maybe should have the macro lens on for this. Okay, I'll do the same on this one here. I want to make sure I have it out far enough so that it holds the uh, that uh, part of the uh, bulkhead out so it'll be even with this right here. I, th I think I pretty much got it here. Now, did we leave ourselves enough room for the davit? Oh, yeah. Okay, this side is going to be a little easier to do. And the reason being is the gunnel is a little bit proud of the deck so I can bring it up against the side and I'll know that it's in the exact right place <clears throat> you know when I'm trying to smoosh the plastic around now how did we conclude was the best way just let it wick in right um, Well, maybe not. I could turn this on its side and then roll it in place after. Sure, sure uh, wicks fast. Okay, now don't cover the hole. Gotta go. That's good. I know it looks like I'm putting a lot on, but I want to make sure that, you know, that it dissolves the plastic. Okay, that should be good. Now I'll just move this back and forth here. And I know you can't see it, but I can see it. it's moving probably half a millimeter at a time. 
and sort of seating itself, if you might say. Kind of like grinding valves on a car. Just sort of rubbing it back and forth. Now this one here, make sure I get the angle right. Yeah, it looks good. I'll just sort of roll it into place after. Could this one come my way a little maybe? Yeah, just a little bit. There you can you can actually see the plastic and everything oozing out along the edge there. Well you could if you had the macro lens on, but you didn't put it on. Um okay here we go. that cure. Oh, I was, I was lucky. I was, without realizing it, I was putting pressure on the side of that. Glad, glad I didn't break it off. Now, I found that when I was doing the Bismarck and I'd do something like this, it was actually quite strong, even where there was paint involved because the paint and the plastic and everything had all sort of melded together. Okay, I've already done the other side and turned the ship around now. And um, all I want to do is just have it look so that when you look straight down, it doesn't appear that it's a piece of plastic sitting there. Now, I know I had said that I was going to uh, use the uh, Tamiya paint retarder. But I'm not going to bother just for this little bit here. Okay. Now I have a bad habit of wanting to give it another another go. But I think what I'll do is I'll let that dry. And if it looks like it needs a second coat. I don't think it will. Well, it's starting to look a little bit blotchy there. You can sort of see the... I don't, I don't need to do along the sides here. Because that's going to be... You know, I'm going to want to glue that to the plastic of the of the uh, superstructure. So, maybe a little bit right there. Okay. That was only 120 degrees. Okay, I know that a person has a feeling like you want to just grab that piece and stick it on and see how it's going to fit, but it hasn't even been an hour yet since we glued these on, or more or less, and uh, I, I don't want to take a chance on prolonged stress slowly causing the piece to break out of, break off. Um, however, there is some stuff that we can do, even though the the part is not mount this uh is not mounted in its place um i i do think that it's probably safe to put some of these uh mounts for the boats like are the brackets that the boats sit on i i'm pretty sure we can go ahead and do that while we're waiting for this to dry and you know i, I imagine they're they're probably pretty much dry here like I can touch the paint, but I meant that I'm worried about the glue, okay? Mm. 
Now I realize it might be a little bit hard to see the numbers. All right. Now remember, the ones that have the hole are the E. So if we want a D, D, 31, 32, and 33, we have to take something that doesn't have a hole. And <clears throat> that would be like right here. Okay. Now we do want to be sticking the wrong ones in the wrong the wrong places. Otherwise, they're not going to match up on the hulls of the uh, of the uh, motor launches. Okay, so so D thirty one, thirty two, and thirty three. That would be right there. Thirty one, thirty two, thirty three. Okay, D thirty one goes right there, which is right here. And I think if I'm smart. I'll just nip them off one at a time as I need them. That way I'm not going to accidentally get them mixed up. So we want D31. Try not to get my my hand in your way here. It, it doesn't have to be real pretty because this end is going to be going down into the slot on the deck. I'm having trouble here. Okay, there's 31. And I don't think it matters which way it goes because it's uh, at best I remember they were they were mirror image to each other. You know, one side looks like the other, so it doesn't matter which way it goes. Okay, where's my tweezers here? You know what? I think we're going to have to call this video a day, and uh, we'll uh, take up again in uh, episode. Uh, 600? Yeah, I think it's episode 600. So, all being well, we'll see you tomorrow in episode 600. Thanks for watching. <laughs>